In previous lecture, we already learned how to derive the Bernoulli equation. And in this uh, lecture, I would like to again to remind you that to use uh, the Bernoulli equation correctly, we must constantly remember the basic assumption used in its derivation. So there is four ideas that you really need to understand before we, uh, we, before we could use the Bernoulli equation for our calculation. So the first one is the viscous effect are assumed negligible. So the viscous effect means there are no, no slip condition. So it means uh, the molecule or the fluid is moving as an ideal fluid. Num number two is the flow is assumed to be steady. Means there are no changes in velocity in terms of time. Three, the flow is assumed to be incompressible. So it means the density is always constant. And for the equation is applicable along a streamline. So in example later on, I will explain what is the idea of uh, the Bernoulli equation only can be used for molecule that travel on the same streamline only. So and then uh, I hope student could uh, remember the Bernoulli equation. It's written like this one because in test and exam there are no uh, attachment or there are no uh, Bernoulli equation in the question. So you need to remember uh, uh, the equation. So normally in uh, our syllabus we will use this term of Bernoulli equation: p over rho g plus v square over two g plus z. So where P here is the pressure at point number one. V here is the V1 means the velocity at point number one. And Z is the height from one specific datum. So uh, I hope uh, student will understand how to draw the datum and then to take the height to calculate the Bernoulli equation here. Physical interpretation. Integration of the equation of motion to give equation uh, Bernoulli equation actually correspond to the work energy principle often used in the study of dynamic. The work done on a particle by all forces acting on the particle is equal to the change of the kinetic energy of the particle. Each of the term in this equation has the unit of energy per weight or length and represent a certain type of heat. So in Bernoulli equation, normally we call all those energy in terms of heat here. So the, the description is like this. The elevation term Z is related to the potential energy of the particle and is called the elevation heat. So the term Z here, the height of, uh, of the fluid is called the elevation head. In some textbook, they will call the Z there as the potential head. So and then the pressure term P over rho G is called the pressure head and represent the head of the height of a column of the fluid that is needed to produce the pressure P. So here, the pressure head here, the unit is in meter because it represents the height of a column of the fluid that is needed to produce the pressure P. The unit for pressure is Pascal. However, the unit for height here is meter. The third one, the velocity term V square over 2G is the velocity head and represent the vertical distance needed for the fluid to fall freely, neglecting uh, friction, if it is to reach velocity v from rest. The Again, the idea of v square over 2g, it is the velocity head because it is the represent the vertical distance needed for the fluid to fall freely if it is to reach velocity v from rest. The Bernoulli equation states that the sum of the pressure head, the velocity head, and the elevation head is constant along a streamline. So what you need to understand about this one is, okay, this is the Bernoulli equation. So 
the z here will show us the potential energy mean the height of a specific location of fluid so for sure if we measure the height the unit is meter means that the unit for this term and this term also must be in meter if not that we cannot solve the problem because we cannot solve meter times kilo meter plus kilogram so we need to make sure that all the units it is equal so means that the term for the velocity the or kinetic energy here is meter and the kinet the pressure energy here is meter that's why we call all these three parameter as head so we call this one as elevation head so this is the kinematic head and or velocity head and this is the pressure head so the different of the the different about the unit is if you call it as head pressure head velocity head or potential head the unit must be in meter because it is represent the height of water column to produce the same amount of this pressure this velocity and this uh, potential energy so means that the vil the for example the the very basic idea is if we write p over rho g so it must be in meter let's say five meter here so means you need to say that the pressure head in this system is five meter pressure head however to calculate the pressure here you just bring the rho g to the right side so you have rho g h so you re substitute the h there with the 5 meter here so you could calculate the, the a specific amount with unit pascal so if you want to say about pressure so the unit must be pascal if you want to say about p over rho g so you need to call it as pressure head so and then the value or the unit must be in meter so same goes to the velocity here if you talk about v square over 2g so we you call it as a velocity head so the unit must be in meter so and then if you want to uh, know the value of the velocity you just bring here to the right side and then you do the square square root so you will get v is equal to square root of 2 g h because h here is actually the vertical height so you will get velocity is equal to 2 g h square root so the unit will become meter per second so if you want to talk about the velocity the unit must be in meter per second if you want to talk about v square over 2g you must call it as a velocity head so the unit must be in meter now i would like to share with you about the static stagnation dynamic and total pressure the second term in bernoulli equation is written as v square over 2g is term the dynamic pressure so mean so its interpretation can be seen in figure 6 by considering the pressure at the end of a small tube inserted into the flow and pointing upstream after the initial transient motion has died out the liquid will fill the tube to a height of h as shown the fluid in the tube including that at its tip will be stationary that is v2 equal to 0 or 0.2 is a stagnation point so this phenomenon is like this for example we have a pipe here so and then on the surface of this pipe we connect with a hollow tube like this one so and then at another point we make a hole and then we put a hollow tube like this one so the difference between this tube is the second tube here so the tube will penetrate in the in the pipe until at the middle uh, of the pipe like this one so and then in real uh, situation so in real application 
we will found that the water will flow from left to right so and then the water will fill this hollow tube and then stop at certain level so it stopped because the pressure uh, was balanced by the atmospheric pressure that act on the surface okay so and then in this in the second tube so the water will flow they will go in inside this hollow tube and then they will flow until this level so and then after certain level the pressure will be balanced by the atmospheric pressure here so and then so when the water inside this hollow tube cannot flow anymore so it will become static so and then the, this fluid will static until this point which is the point number two here so and then another liquid will flow and then the the next fluid that's flow will go th pass through the this hollow tube okay, you need to imagine like this one so this phenomenon is written in the paragraph as this one so and then at point number two because the fluid is stagnant so the, the fluid is stationary or stagnant so we assume the velocity is equal to zero and we call point number two here is the stagnant stagnation point so means that we know that water will go into this tube and then it will become a stagnant a stagnant so and then we call at at this point at the entering point here as stagnation point so please remember this mechanism so because it stagnant mean the fluid is not moving not flow anymore so the velocity will equal to zero and then if we apply the Bernoulli equation between point one and point two we substitute the value of v square equal uh, v2 is equal to zero and assuming that z1 is equal to z2 we could find that p2 is equal to p1 plus 1 over 2 rho v1 squared hence the pressure at the stagnation point is greater than the static pressure p1 by an amount of 1 over 2 rho v1 squared means that this is the dynamic pressure so to calculate this one we could simplify like this one first please remember the fourth condition of Bernoulli equation so we only could compare the Bernoulli equation that flow on the same streamline so we imagine like this so let's say we have a fluid flow pass through the point number one here and then pass through point number two and then go up here and then it becomes stagnant so and then we assume that another uh, molecule that flow on the same streamline here so because it is a stagnation point and point two so it will go a little bit and then it continue the path here so yes it's a, a little bit uh, a hiccup here but we assume that this is still the same streamline so and then because we are evaluating the same streamline so we assume that molecule at here will have energy same energy with molecule at here at point number one and at point number two because all of this point is on the same streamline so means that we could compare the total energy for each point here using the Bernoulli equation so means that if we say that this is point number one so this is point number two so this is point number three let's say and this is point number four so means that we could say that uh, total energy for point one is equal to point two equal to point three and equal to point four so that total energy actually can be written as Bernoulli equation as this one p over rho g plus v square over 2g and plus z and then equal to constant so the, the the word constant here means the total energy is constant for all the point 
on the streamline here. Okay, so I hope you could understand the meaning of constant here. It actually reflects the total amount of energy. However, however, the the value for each energy for for pressure energy or pressure head, velocity head and uh, potential head here may be different point from point one from one point to another. So this is. Uh, uh, I hope you could understand this one. So the total energy is constant, but the value of on specific energy will be different. So and then we try to compare what happened between point one and point two. So we have a point one here, and then we have a point two here. So because it is on the stream on the same streamline, so we could say that the Bernoulli uh, we could compare it uh, in Bernoulli equation. So we we write P1 over rho G plus V1 square over 2G plus Z1. It is equal to P2 over rho G plus V square plus Z2. Okay, first step that you need to do before you could solve the Bernoulli equation is you must uh, make a datum. Uh, a reference line to do the calculation because you must know that P over rho G is pressure head, V square over 2G is velocity head and Z is the potential head. So all the unit is in meter. Meter mean distance. So the, the definition of that distance is the vertical distance. The vertical distance that could give you that pressure, a, a, a vertical distance that could give you certain amount of velocity and certain amount of uh, potential energy. So and then to determine the distance, so means you need to measure from one constant or one fixed origin. So that is that we call datum. So usually it is okay for us to take the bottom of the the bottom of the uh, pipe is the datum. Or we could take the, the center line of the pipe is the datum. So let's say this is our datum. Okay. So and then to calculate the pressure at point number one here, okay. So we could calculate as rho g h actually. So we, we just take the point from here to here. So this is the rho g h, and then we add with atmospheric pressure here. Because we assume atmospheric pressure is uh, is zero, so we could neglect the effect of atmospheric pressure. So at point number one here, so please be remember how to calculate the uh, the pressure. So we assume that the pressure at point number one is just the rho g h. So and then the velocity at point number one here, so we have uh, a, a certain amount of velocity, and then the value of z here. So because it stay or point one is on the datum, so we assume that it is equal to zero. So and then for pressure number two here, so we have a pressure number two here. Okay, so we could calculate by looking this manometer. So we could calculate it is rho g capital H. So and then velocity at point number two here is equal to zero because it is a stagnation point. So the z here is equal to zero because it, this point is on the datum. So if we simplify this one, so mean there are no velocity at point two, no z two and no z one. So and then we only have a pressure and the velocity one and velocity and velocity one, pressure one and pressure two. So, so means that if we write an equation, so we have the P over rho G, so we have V1, V1 square over 2G, we have no Z, and then we have P2 here with a rho G, no velocity at point 2 and no Z. So this is the equation that we could derive from the Bernoulli equation and then if you change you bring the rho g to the left hand side here 
So you may get this equation. So this is the uh, the the idea how to use the Bernoulli equation. So and then because uh, the state the P one here is called the static pressure. Why we call uh, we call it as uh, a static pressure because if you see at point one here it is it is uh, measured by a barometer here so and then because at point number one here there is a moving it is a moving fluid so means that we only could measure the static the static pressure only because the the moving part will give us the kinetic energy so however at point number one here at point at point number two here so we stop the motion we stop the molecule means all the kinetic energy will convert into a pressure so that's why the pressure here will go higher in in this uh, barometer because uh, the, the all the pressure means the all the pressure from uh, the energy from the kinetic energy is converted into the pressure so means that the pressure here is increased so and then okay we call it as a dynamic pressure because this is the uh, the in the inclusion means the pressure that comes from the pressure of the fluid plus the kinetic uh, plus the kinetic energy so it can be shown that there is a stagnation point on any station, stationary body that is placed into a flowing fluid. So means the idea of stagnation point, we will learn it more in uh, fluid mechanics too later on. So but in application, the stagnation point is actually exists. So for example, if we have a cylinder or a spear here, so we could say that the stagnation point is actually when the free stream velocity so hit the surface of the sphere here so and then after it's hitting the sphere here so it will move on the surface and then it will go outside like this one so and then at the moment the molecule hit the surface here so the, mo the molecule will stop for a while for a so this because it is stopped so we could say that the velocity is equal to zero and then we could call this point as a stagnation point. So and then in real uh, application, for example, in nose of aeroplane like this one, so the, the air will come here and then they will hit the nose here and then we could, we could call this point as a stagnation point. Some of the fluid flows over and some under the object. The dividing line or surface for two-dimensional flow is termed the stagnation streamline and terminates all the stagnation point on the body. For symmetrical object such as a sphere, the stagnation point is clearly at the tip or front or of the object as shown in figure 7. For non-symmetrical objects such as the A-plane shown in figure 7b, the location of the stagnation point is not always obvious. Knowledge of the value of the static and stagnation pressure in a fluid implies that the fluid speed can be calculated. This is the principle on which the pitot static tube is based by uh, D. Pitot as shown in figure 8. So the ideas of uh, determination of static and stagnation pressure here is actually to calculate the fluid speed, the velocity. Later on in tutorial, I will show you how to determine the velocity and the pressure by using the, by using the Bernoulli equation. So this is the example of the pitot tube that usually uh, we use in our laboratory.